This is the top five watercolor tips in two minutes or less, and I'm calling this part two, and here come five tips real fast. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here. I'm starting to uh, make my YouTube channel a little bit more concise. And in order to do that, I'm taking some really old videos that I did two and a half years ago, which are very, very short, and putting them together as a compilation. This is the second in the series. Um, so each video is quite short. The first one is the very first video I ever made ever, so be gentle with me. <laughs> it, was, it was so hard. Um, it's called um, Value, and it's a concrete way of showing value. The second one is how to send a a painting and that's about presentation when you sell a painting how you might want to present it to your buyer uh, the third one is how to test drive a, a brush how do you know if a brush is any good or not uh, the fourth one is how to paint shiny things uh, which is very helpful around Christmas time and the fifth one is called art jeopardy in which I provide the question and eventually the answer but um, and that one is about layering paint so um, I hope you find these very helpful. Um, I'm getting a lot of views on these compilations and what I'm gonna do is take those short videos, get rid of them, and leave these ones that are all packed together in one place. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. Please forgive my weird hair and um, my unprofessionalism. Okay, see you next time, bye-bye. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach, with a quick observation about values. In values, we always have darks, mediums, and lights. And in that case, we have a dark, a medium, and a light. And the way we know this is because we have a value finder that helps us identify that. Or I often use this uh, red plexiglass, red plexiglass screen. You can see that that is dark. You can see that the green shows up as medium and the orange will show up as a light. So in a painting you want to have a good number, of, a good range of darks to lights and mediums as well. And um, so that's a really good thing. However, if you always have the same amounts of those things in a painting, it, it tends to be sort of um, not exciting. And so you have to switch it up. And one way to do that would be this. So you have a lot of mid-tones, maybe some darks, and a few lights. This is what most of my paintings end up being. I don't know why, but I must like this ratio. And behind me you can see a conglomeration of, of flowers where I do exactly that. Mostly mid-tones, some darks, which are usually those connecting patterns that I'm always looking for, and some of the lights. So what you wanna do when you're painting is not just be aware of that there is such a thing as darks, mediums, and lights, but how are you going to make those ratios interesting? Because in real life, out in nature, very seldom do you find things that are equal and regular. Usually that's a sign of man getting involved um, in an architectural garden in some way or on a building. Uh, nature likes to be a little bit more um, uh, let's call it freehand. <laughs> well, anyway, so um, so that's the tip for the day. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. Some people have asked me, how do I box my paintings up for um, delivery? And I'm going to show you. So when you go to the mailbox, this is the way a painting will come. That doesn't look very exciting, I have to admit. Um, but when you open it up, what I want is I want everybody who gets one of my paintings to feel like they were really special. So to do that, I take the painting and I put it in a mat, and then I put a glass scene, you can see if I turn it this way, a clear glass scene envelope, which I think makes everything look great. Have you ever seen a fruit basket without a glass scene uh, surface? I don't think so. It makes everything shiny and special. Um, you also get a business card. Uh, and a fabric ribbon. I think it's really important to go high class here. Uh, I use neutral uh, gender free colors. You can have it in green or, or red. I don't ask their opinion. I decide which one goes better with the painting. And then on the back, always a postcard of mine with a thank you note. 
So when you get a Joe McKenzie original, this is how it comes. And I hope that everybody who gets one feels very special on the day that they get it. So that's my tip for the day. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet. Ask for value, mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. Soon I'm going to be making some videos about the brushes that I use because people have written and asked me if I would talk more about the materials that are really special to me. But before I do that, I thought that I would give a task that would help you with the brushes that you're currently using. Uh, if you want to get to know your brushes, go ahead and write your name with them. This is written with a number 12 flat. This is written with a number 10 flat. Uh, here is my signature with a number, I didn't write, probably a number 10 round, and finally um, a number six round. If you wanna to get to know how your brush will work, both for lines, for dots, for dabs, if you really wanna sort of know all the different ways that you can move it and use it gesturally, write your name with a brush that you have at least 10 times. And um, if you find that you're, you look down and, and see lots of hairs that are falling off your brush, uh, get rid of it. It's, it's, uh, make sure that your materials are, are worthy. So that's my tip for the day. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet. Please sign up for my YouTube channel because I find that a thrill. And I'll see you at joemckenzie.com. Bye-bye. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. I thought that now that we're getting into the winter time and things are, light is becoming harder and harder to come by, it might be fun to paint some shiny things. And so um, I got busy painting a shiny silver bow. And I wanted to share with you how you can achieve the illusion of shiny because of course there is no tube of paint that says shiny on it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? A tube that says a tube of moist, a tube of, tube of shiny, a tube of foggy, a tube of wet, uh, a dream, dream on. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, the way to achieve shiny is to have a very big difference between your lightest lights, as you can see the white here, um, there's a white spot here, and your darkest dark deep into these crevices. If you can achieve that, you will achieve that punch of shiny, which you will find in something like this metallic ro uh, bow. You won't find in a rose because, of course, a rose is not shiny, so you want to keep things uh, soft and not have that kind of uh, deliberate... Uh, uh, sharp edge and, 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 and deep difference between lights and darks. And here's the same thing happening with complementary colors on a gold bow. These little highlights read as shiny because of the dark patterns that are woven in, in between shapes. And now I will show you next to it where I have not achieved shiny yet. I have achieved gold, and that's a plus because I struggle with my ye yellows. I can make them browns very, very quickly. Uh, but in order to get shiny, I've got to go darker into some of these areas, and that will make those whites pop. And I will achieve shiny today. Yes, I will. But, uh, but not until later. Um, so that's the tip for the day. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet. Please join my YouTube channel and come see me at joemckenzie.com. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Shine on. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. I'm going to answer a question Patty asked me. Patty is a, a student that I had uh, over a uh, FaceTime session uh, last week. And since I can't articulate her question, we're going to play Jeopardy. I'm going to give the answer first, and then we'll figure out what the question was. All right, here is the answer. Here is a uh, um, darks. I have D for darks, M for medium, L for lights. All right, so take a look at that. And we all know with watercolor that when it first comes out of the tube, you're going to get the strongest amount of color. In other words, color will get lighter the more water you add to it. And I, I have a long rant about not using water to get to the value that you want to get to. That's not what we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about darks, mediums, and lights. All right, so here's a dark. And with a lot of water added to about the strength of T, you have a light. All right, same color. This is ultramarine blue. All right, let's take a look now at the value. See how dark the dark is? Now let's go over to the light. See how light the light is? All right, now let's look at the medium. Interesting. In other words, can you see that they're almost all the same? 
Mm, it starts to get a little dark down here, but not much. It's still not as dark as the dark in the dark column. So let me explain what this middle column is. What this middle column is, is first I made a medium with my ultramarine blue. I dried it and I, I put the exact same color on top again with the exact same amount of water. So that's, uh, what would you call that? Layer one. Then I layered it again. Then I layered it three times, four times, five times. I think I could keep going. I think I could go to six. I don't think it would be until I got to about seven times, maybe eight, that it's actually going to match the dark of the, uh, the, the value in the dark column. So what I was talking about yesterday on my Facebook Live was as long as you make sure ahead of time, you know, when you're, when you're planning your paintings, that you find your lights, your mediums, and your darks, you can put another layer on top of a color, as long as it's the same color. You can see the color is stronger here than it is here, but it did not change the value. It did not push it out of this column into this column. It just can't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was her question. Her question was, if you put a lot of layers on uh, in your mediums, won't it start to tip you over into your darks? And my argument is, yeah, maybe eventually, but it's going to take an awful lot of layers to do that. And um, if at all, I would even say if at all. And that's why this planning for darks, mediums, and lights is so important. You make these decisions, and then you can adjust them by adding another layer, but you're not locked in. It gives you some wiggle room. So, Patty, I hope that answers your question. Uh, and you can try it. It just shows up really well in ultramarine blue, but you could try this with any color at all. All right, uh, now it's different. I uh, just want to quickly say it is different if you're going to pick a different color. If I, uh, But that's not what we're talking about here, and I don't think that's what she was talking about either. I'm not, because my way of painting is not lots of layers. It's, it's using, uh, the most I use maybe two, maybe three layers. I'm not one of those people that uses eight and 12 layers. Uh, I just, I just uh, don't have it in my noggin to do it. All right, so that's my tip for the day. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet, mask for value, picks for color, and don't drop your value finder. <laughs> and join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.